Morning, glory, evening, grace, brethren, and sisters. Let's have all of back along with us here with our Word Awakening and our weekend study. And I certainly do look forward to getting into the book of Haggai uh, this, uh, this week. Had our introduction last week. And just uh, quickly, uh, by way of announcements, of course, as we've been saying, we'll be having our uh, winter revival starting this Monday on January the 3rd, uh, 2022, at the present time of, uh, of this recording. And we'll be going until Friday night, until the until Friday, until the 7th, so we do uh, look forward to that. And then after our revival, we will begin our uh, new semester of uh, temperance, uh, our new semester with Word Bible Institute. I believe the first class we'll have, yes, is going to be in the book of John. We'll continue there in the book of John. And then also with Temperance Awakening, we'll begin our lectures on alcohol. And so we look forward to uh, getting back into the swing of those things as well. Of course, and tomorrow, on a Sunday the 2nd, we'll be having our uh, Sunday sermon, uh, continuing in the book of Psalms. And so we'll come back and be with us with a word awakening and all of these things. And uh, by way of prayer requests, as we mentioned on our midweek uh, prayer meeting, I'm still recovering a little bit from uh, from like a, uh, some type of cold, something that I had, cold flu type symptoms. My wife and daughter and mother-in-law actually also now have it, so pray that God would just be with all of us, as well as all those out there sick in body. I know there's once again rising COVID cases, like where we currently live in Alabama. I believe we've reached like a, a record high of COVID cases, so we hate that. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, and we pray that this would just, you know, go away, as it certainly hindered our family, as well as many other people. And uh, so, as well as our church, as well, our church has been hurt. It's been, uh, I don't really want to say hurt, but, you know, been hit by this a couple of times. And so, uh, and so let's do pray for one another, amen, that God would be with us all. And I want to get right into the uh, book of Haggai here. And uh, get through as much uh, as we can. We'll read a, uh, we'll read the first three verses of the book of Haggai, and then uh, we will have a, a word of prayer, starting in the first chapter, reading the first three verses, where it says, "In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedesh, the high priest, saying." Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, And, uh, Lord, we uh, do love you and thank you for the forgiveness of sin and for our salvation and all that you've done for us, Lord. And uh, thank you so much, Lord, for this ministry and all that we are allotted to do to build your kingdom. And I pray that you'd bless the reading of your word and just help us, Lord God, as we try to preach here. Just to bless your people with peace, touch us all, use us all for your honor and glory. Certainly pray for another revival, Lord God, that you would just uh, use this to revive our hearts. And that we would ever just be like Haggai and rebuild your kingdom and have another revival before that trumpet sounds, before your people are taken off of this earth. Just bless all those sick in body, such as myself, uh, that you would just uh, be with our throat and everything. Thing and just make this easy on us, help us to fully recover, be with my wife, mother, uh, my wife, daughter, and mother-in-law who also have it, as well as all those out there sick in body, these that have COVID and have been hit by that, that you would just touch us and help us all, Lord God, be what you ought to be to build your kingdom, to ever be faithful to you, do what you'd have us do and be what you'd have us to be, that you would just help each and every heart and soul out there, Lord, those that have burdens and are carrying things, I pray that you touch them and help them, that you give us all that which we need, Lord, that you bless our dear listeners and viewers in a mighty way. And just touch and be with each and every one of us, Lord, for it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen and amen. And so now, continuing here, a book uh, that we're currently writing, Be Like Haggai, Rebuild the Kingdom of God. And last week we gave our uh, a bit of an introduction here to it, gave it a foreword and some things. <coughs> and now beginning to get into the book. This is in the second year of Darius the king. Darius the king took the throne of Persia in 521 BC, so this year of Haggai's ministry would be 520 BC. And so a secular writers refer to this king Darius as Darius Hestopis, so if I'm Hestopis, if I'm saying that correctly. Or I think it's just supposed to be Darius Hestopis. Darius Hestopis, I think, is the appropriate way to say it. And it says there, the sixth month. This uh, sixth month in the Hebrew calendar was Elul. And uh, this would uh, be uh, would be a September in our calendar that we now use the Gregorian calendar. And we see here that the prophet gave his message first to the civil and religious leader of Judah. 
Now first, uh, the governor Zerubbabel and Joshua the high priest, and they certainly were not bad people, as we'll later see here. These were not like bad people or immoral people. You know, they didn't care. It's not that they didn't care about the spiritual state of Judah, but they were just more so, you know, discouraged because of the people's slackness. You know, in rebuilding the temple, they needed encouragement, you know, more than anything. And that's just like our time. You know, when so many people, so many other people are negligent in spiritual matters, you know, we should encourage those who do want the Lord's work to go forward. You know, certainly those who do want a revival. <coughs> like if we go to the first chapter, like of the book of Joshua, you know, very familiar text here. Like in a Joshua 1.9. You know, it says, um, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And, you know, we live in a wicked world where there's, you know, very little respect, you know, for the things of God. You know, but we can have courage and be strong in the Lord, you know, knowing that the Lord is always with us. Uh, Psalm 46, you know, verse number 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You know, God is a constant help in trouble sometimes. Like Romans chapter 8. Romans 8.31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? <coughs> Certainly in our number... You know, Bible-believing Christians, you know, who really love God's holiness and, you know, want another revival, you know, people that would be of our position, you know, of, you know, being doctrinally straight, you know, really loving holiness, you know, wanting a revival, you know, doing things right, you know, we are very, very, uh, you know, small number, you know, we are very small numerically, you know, but with God, you know, we are the majority because no amount of people you know, are able to stand against the Lord. <clears throat> you know, and we'll continue to see throughout the book of Haggai that Zerubbabel was a governor that God used for a special occasion. You know, we certainly need more politicians, you know, that or that way, but godly politicians, you know, were a pretty rare thing, you know, even in ancient times, and, you know, they're probably even more scarce now, you know, than many years ago. You know, and even Israel, you know, they had a, uh, you know, they had a history of, you know, corrupt government leaders. You know, that's certainly something that the prophet Jose, you know, contended with a lot, you know, in the northern kingdom. You know, we have several verses there, Jose 7-7. says, you know, they are all hot as an oven, and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. We can just go back there to verse number 5 of Hosea 7. It says, In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners. You know, then verse number 3 of Hosea 7. <clears throat> it says, uh, They make the king glad with their wickedness, and the princes with their lies. And then in uh, verse number 16 of Hosea 7, it says, They return, but not to the Most High. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the age of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. And then uh, Hosea chapter 9 and verse number 15. It says, All their all the, their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them for their wickedness of their doings. I will drive them out of mine house. I will love them no more. All their princes are revolters. And Hosea 5.10. The princes of Judah were like them that removed the bound. Therefore I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. And then uh, Hosea 8.4. Last one to look at here. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. <coughs> See, you know, political leaders should be a moral example, you know, since, you know, to the people of the land. You know, should be a moral example to the people of the land, as, you know, they are public servants. You know, they're to be servants, you know, to us, the people. 
you know, however the opposite, you know, is usually the case, you know, especially now. And you know, there are lots of people in this day and time who almost have an obsession, you know, with pop, you know, with politics, which is something that we certainly, you know, shouldn't have. A lot of people, you know, you know, even, you know, fundamental Christians, you know, especially, you know, evangelicals as a whole, but even fundamental Christians, you know, it's like, you know, they almost put all their stock, you know, in politics, you know, especially conservative politicians. <clears throat> but, you know, we put our faith and trust in God, and, you know, whenever the time comes, you know, we have to reprove, you know, politicians, as the prophet Micah did. You know, Micah chapter 3, verses 1 and 9, it says, And I said here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Then verse 9, hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob, and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. And, you know, our ministry leaders, you know, definitely, you know, need encouragement. You know, if you have a godly pastor, then you have a, you know, you have a rare entity. You know, the last thing, you know, the devil wants, you know, is a preacher that is praying and has a heart for revival. That's something I know I've mentioned that several times when I'm about to go over here. But, you know, I was just thinking, you know, about how much the devil fought me. You know, the devil didn't want, you know, this word awakening to happen. He didn't want me to be a man of prayer. You know, like in 2020, you know, almost a couple of years ago, you know, whenever my heart for revival, you know, reached an all-time high. You know, like I said, the devil did all he could to stop me. He didn't want... You know, Word Awakening, you know, a revival, preaching and teaching ministry established. You know, he didn't want Word Bible Institute to happen. A Bible Institute that, you know, teaches preacher boys to be revivalist. And, you know, you know, to sell out to God, to live a life of prayer, studying the Bible and holiness. You know, the devil don't want, you know, anybody doing that. You know, I went through a lot of tears and heartache with these ministries. But, you know, by the grace of God, you know, they began and they continue. And, you know, like when I was at my parents' house, you know, like my dad and sisters, you know, they were talking about a young evangelist. Uh, you know, just to tell you a little bit about him, you know, he was raised in a Christian home. Uh, you know, he was like as a teenager, as a young man, he had a bad drug addiction. And then he got put into, you know, like a, you know, like a, some type of home, you know, for people trying to recover from drugs. And, you know, he got saved there. You know, he got saved, got into church, and then he surrendered to preach, and he was a powerhouse preacher, you know, a lot back, you know, from like, uh, you know, like 2000, yeah, like 2009, you know, up to, you know, like about 2014, you know, he was, uh, you know, a powerhouse, you know, evangelist, had a real heart for revival, you know, was firing up, you know, a lot of young preachers and all, you know, just had, you know, the heart that I have for the revival, you know, that was him. You know, he was just, you know, a powerhouse for the Lord. I mean, God was really using then the devil. Like, like I said, drugs, you know, was his weakness. You know, he had a previous drug addiction, and the devil was on him, on him, on him, on him. <clears throat> and, you know, unfortunately, you know, he ended up going back to drugs. And he got addicted to them, and eventually he overdosed. I believe that was back, like, in 2014, 15, somewhere around that time frame. Because, see, the devil... You know, he don't want preachers that have a heart for revival. You know, we need to encourage, you know, the you know our, you know, ministerial leaders. You know, not just preachers. Preachers, yes, you know, pastors, evangelists, you know, missionaries, you know, and so forth. And also our deacons, Sunday school teachers, you know, all Christians, certainly, you know, that have a heart for God. Because <coughs> the last thing that the devil wants is for us to have another great awakening. And now we'll look at one last thing here in verses 2 and 3. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying... Now we'll look at verse number 3. It says, Then came the word of the Lord. So Haggai wrote this book, and he was the prophet that God used during this post-exilic time. But you see what he gave there, the word of God. You know, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. <coughs> <coughs> then came the word of the Lord. Now, of course, this is a major issue, something we've covered, you know, you know, a number of times, you know, here with this ministry. You know, lots of people today are not doing things God's way because they simply miss God's word. You know, you know, the man behind the pulpit, you know, must know God's word. You know, that's certainly, you know, one of the areas, you know, that this all, you know, begins with. Like 2 Timothy 2.15, you know, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy in this pastoral epistle, 
Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, one of the main obligations the preacher is, you know, the preacher has is to know, you know, is to know the Lord's word. You know, then uh, I'm back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 24, 8 says, Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priest, the Levite, shall teach you as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. You know, the priest had to thoroughly know the law and teach all, you know, and teach all of it to the people of Israel. Right, going back to Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse number 34. It says, Neither have our kings, our princes, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law, nor hearkened unto thy commandments and thy testimonies wherewith thou didst testify against them. Now the people of Israel, you know, lost their land because they rebelled against the law and lived, you know, lives of paganism. And as that saying goes, history just repeats itself. You know, we have the same thing happening now. You know, churches are turning away from God's word. You know, to do things the world's way. You know, certainly a big part of that is because people simply don't know the Bible. You know, we're not studying the Bible, you know, starting in the pulpit. You know, it's sad, you know, there are lots of pastors, you know, even, you know, that are not students of the Bible. You know, we must know what the Word of God says. And the Bible adequately teaches the child of God the necessity of staying true to the Word of God. Right, we'll look at some passages here and we'll be done with the first chapter, like in Acts 13, verses four, starting in verse number 46. It says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but saying ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. In verse number 48, When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Like the Philippians 2.16. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. See, holding the word of life. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. <coughs> Going back to... Actually, first we'll look at Joshua 1.8. We'll look at Joshua 1.9. Now we'll look at Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1, 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now we go to the book of Psalms. The first chapter of Psalm, Psalm 1, 1, Psalm, Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now we'll go over to the 119th Psalm. Of course, a big psalm here. All about David's love. That's what this whole psalm is all about. We're just going to read a few verses out of this here. But you know, this whole psalm, the longest chapter in the Bible. You know, that's all about David's praise, you know, for the wonderful Word of God. <coughs> In Psalm 119, 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Verse 14. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. Verse 35. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Verse 47, And I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. Verse 92, Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. 
And lastly, verse 97. Oh how, I, oh, how love I thy law is my meditation all the day. So we see here how the believer, you know, is exhorted to love the word of God. You know, and to joy in God's word. You know, how many, how many people really love the word of God, you know, like that? Who really love the good Lord's word? See, whenever you love the word like that, though, it's going to be in your heart. You know, and you're going to live it. You know, it's much easier to do something when you love it. <coughs> so let's really love the Word, amen, and live it. And thank you for being here with us today, and that's all of chapter number one. And uh, we will uh, begin chapter number two next week. And uh, so we'll get into uh, next week as well. So I really look forward to continuing in the book of Haggai as well as tomorrow. Whenever we do our Sunday sermon, going to be there in the book of Psalms. And so uh, come on back and be with us, amen. And, uh, of course, be praying for revival. I'll be getting into revival here as well in just a couple of days. Going to be looking at five Bible characters. Uh, the first night we're going to be looking at Job. Uh, Tuesday night we're going to be looking at Deborah. Uh, Wednesday night we're going to be looking at Ezra. Thursday night we're going to be looking at Ruth. And then Friday night we're going to be looking at the prophet Jose. And so we look forward to the upcoming revival looking at these Bible characters as great examples for us. So come back and be with us, amen, and be praying for us. And uh, for now, until then, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the many blessings that you bestowed upon our hearts and lives. Thank you so much, Lord, for our salvation and for this ministry, for the joy that's in our heart and the opportunity to do it. And I pray that we would ever all be faithful, Lord God, and just do what we ought to do and what we ought to be, Lord, to build your kingdom, that we would just walk with you, walk close to you. Just keep us all encouraged, Lord, and use us for your honor and for your glory. And just bless, Lord, all our dear listeners. We pray, give them a special blessing, and bring us back all here at the next point in time. Lord, and we care for you, give you all that, all the praise, and all the glory for all because weather, Lord, for it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen and amen. And thank you so much, folks, for being with us, and we'll see you next time. So that it breaks in the shadows, flee away. I am Dr. Coop, and I love you, and I appreciate you.